In this video, we're going to be looking at the role of token economies in the management of schizophrenia. So note that it's not a therapy necessarily or a treatment, but it is a method that's used to manage schizophrenia. So token economies are a behaviorist therapy. That's a behavior modification therapy. Which is basically a, a therapy a behavior therapy that's based on the principles of operant conditioning. Token economies were used extensively in the 1960s and 70s when hospitalization was still the main method for dealing with patients with schizophrenia. The use has now mostly declined. We don't see many token economies being used, partly due to the closure of those psychiatric hospitals, but also because of the really complex ethical issues that arise when you intentionally restrict rewards to people with severe mental disorders. But it's really important to note that token economies are still used in other parts of the world. So token economies are a behaviorist therapy used to manage the behavior of patients with schizophrenia who have developed patterns of maladaptive behavior through long periods of time in psychiatric hospitals. So what we often find when people are institutionalized is that over time they start to develop bad habits like poor hygiene or lack of socializing with others, which is really understandable when you consider that living in these hospitals without routine, without the small pleasures that we normally experience in daily life, people quickly deteriorate and become pretty reliant and pretty apathetic. So token economies mostly tackle maladaptive behavior surrounding things like personal care or condition related behavior like apathy um, and social behavior as well. And so it's to overcome these patterns of maladaptive behavior and instead instill more positive adaptive behaviors. So it's not a cure for schizophrenia. It's not even a therapy for schizophrenia. It's just used to improve the quality of life for patients. So it's got two main benefits, really. It's to help the person's life within the hospital a little bit better. Um, so, for example, we could use rewards like makeup for somebody who enjoys taking pride in their appearance, just to make you know give themselves give their lives a little bit of extra light. And it also helps to normalize behaviour. Um, so that patients, when they have spent long periods of time in the hospital, they're able to then adapt to normal life in the community. For example, rewarding them for getting dressed or for making their beds. So um, what's involved? Well, obviously a token economy requires tokens. What the, um, the hospitals will need to do is to identify target behaviours like making the bed or getting dressed or taking medication, for example. And these target behaviours can be decided on an individual basis. So it's really important to know the patient to decide what their target behaviours should be. So the tokens are coloured discs, like the one you see up here. And these are given immediately after the desired behaviour. If there's any delay in giving the token, then they're not going to be particularly effective. So every time the patient carries out one of these desired behaviours, they're immediately given one of these tokens. So therefore, we're really using the principles here of positive reinforcement. Now note that the tokens themselves don't have any value, as we know, because they are secondary reinforcers, um, but they can be swapped for more tangible rewards. So um, their secondary reinforce reinforcers, they don't actually have any value to the person receiving them, but that value is because they've learned that these can be used to obtain other meaningful rewards. So they can be swapped for um, being able to choose the film, for sweets or magazines, for example. And those meaningful rewards that they're swapping them for, like viewing a film or visiting the canteen, these are primary reinforcers. These do have inherent value to the person. So as I said, this is a, a technique that is used in the management of schizophrenia. It isn't a therapy, but it is used to help manage the behaviour, to overcome maladaptive behaviours and to make life more pleasant in the hospital and to make it easier for a person to adapt to life in the community beyond the hospital. So let's have a look at the evaluation of token economies. Um, well, there is research support to suggest that token economies are effective in helping to um, manage the maladaptive behavior of patients. Um, so in this research, the researchers trialed a token economy system in a ward of women who all had a diagnosis of schizophrenia. And every time they carried out a task, like making their beds or cleaning, they were given a plastic token that was embossed with the words, one gift. So just like the token that you saw in the previous slide. And these tokens could then be swapped for ward privileges, like being able to watch a film, for example. And the researchers found that the number of tasks that the patients carried out increased significantly. And so it was an effective way of managing the behavior of these women 
in the hospital. So the average number of daily tasks rose from five to 42, which is a pretty remarkable increase. Um, and obviously here we can see that there's um, fewer maladaptive behaviours. So this illustrates the success of token economies in getting patients to take more responsibility for themselves, to um, you know, take responsibility for looking after themselves and to actually take steps to help themselves be reintroduced into the community beyond the hospital. So some of the behaviours um, that these women carried out were brushing their hair, making their beds, for example. Another important thing to note is that um, institutionalised patients who have been inside the hospital for a really long period of time quite often start to lack motivation and become pretty apathetic. And this can attract the contempt from the staff and the nurses working at the hospital who view them as kind of pathetic. So token economies mean that patients become more independent. And then in turn, this is gonna increase the nurses regard for the patients. And that in turn is going to lead the patients to become even more motivated and to develop positive self-regard. So this system is um, perpetually reinforcing. As the patients carry out more adaptive behaviours, the nurses are going to treat them with better regard and then they're going to develop better regard for themselves. And that's going to be even more motivating. And so you can see how in that hospital setting, um, actually these tokens are not the only reward. The reward is better treatment from the staff and then more self-respect. Um, and so that leads us to this next point here. It prevents, it prevents institutionalization. So patients become more independent and more active, which means that there's a greater chance that they're then going to be released from the hospital and be able to integrate into the community and perhaps live with their families. And so without showing these um, adaptive behaviors, it's unlikely that they're going to get a chance to live outside the hospital. So it can be helpful in preparing them for life on the outside. But as we know, it's obviously really difficult to translate this to the outside because these desirable behaviours become dependent on being reinforced. And so upon release into the community, when that reinforcement ceases, it can lead to actually high readmittance rates. So I'm just going to put in here, however... Difficult to translate to outside of the hospital, therefore increased readmittance rates. Um, okay, so let's have a look at the limitations now. So it is used in conjunction with antipsychotics and other psychotherapeutic treatments like CBT, for example. It itself is not a treatment for schizophrenia. It's not necessarily a limitation because it's not trying to be, but all I'm saying here is that you could do a really nice compare or contrast paragraph looking at the effectiveness of token economies in comparison to, say, drug treatments. You could actually say that they're better because there are no side effects, um, but you've got that option available to you. And I want to just spend a couple of moments talking about the controversy surrounding um, token economies because they are really controversial. Um, what we find is that those that have more mild symptoms, so those that have less severe schizophrenia, are more likely to achieve rewards. It's easier for them to engage in these behaviours, to make their bed, to take their medication. And so they're going to end up with more rewards than people who have more severe symptoms, who are going to be able to, who are going to find it difficult to comply with the desired behaviours. Which actually means that those that are most severely ill, who are unable to, to engage in these behaviours and are already the most distressed um, can see that their mental health deteriorates even further. They might suffer from discrimination in the hospital by staff and humiliation, which for people who are already suffering distress is just going to make the situation far worse. Um, and the legal action that was taken by families um, of these people um, has been basically the major factor in the decline of the use of token economies in psychiatric settings. We don't really use them anymore because they are seen to be so unethical because they discriminate against those that have the most severe mental illness. And just another thing to think about as well is that perhaps token economies might curtail personal freedoms. So if we've got patients here who perhaps like staying up late or like looking a little bit scruffy, um, what we're saying is you know, we're trying to impose the values of the institution onto these individuals. And that's probably not fair. We need to think about you know, what these target behaviours are and who really they're benefiting. 
And also, if we're restricting the availability, avail availability of pleasures to patients who don't display desirable behaviours, then this can be seen as really unethical as well. Who are we to make a horrible situation even worse for these patients? There's been lots of ethical issues surrounding the use of token economies to manage schizophrenia, and basically now it means that they've, um, they've been abandoned in favour of other therapies like art therapy um, or psychotherapies like CBT.